Our third witness is Lord Christopher Monckton. He is Chief Policy Advisor for the Science and Public Policy Institute. He holds a diploma in journalism from the University College Cardiff. He has worked as an editor at various news outlets, including The Universe, The Telegraph, Sunday Magazine. Uh, today, uh, news, uh, today, newspaper, and the Evening Standard. From 1982 to 1986, he was an advisor to UK Prime Minister Margaret Thatcher and gave policy advice on a variety of issues. He is a founder and director of Christopher Monckton Limited, which consults in public administration. We welcome you, sir. Whenever you're ready, please begin. Mr. Chairman, sir, and uh, ranking member Sensenbrenner, it's a pleasure to see you both again and also many other faces on your committee. Thank you for having the courtesy to ask me to testify in front of you. Uh, I'm going to testify not, of course, as a scientist, because I'm not one, but as a policymaker. And the role of policymakers when confronted with scientists is to know what questions to ask. And I'm going to raise uh, one or two questions now about some of the evidence you've already heard. If you look at the slide uh, now before you, that slide purports but does not demonstrate that the rate of global warming is itself increasing. This is taken from the IPCC's 2007 report where it appears three times large and in full colour. However, it relies on a bogus statistical technique which is applying multiple trend lines to a single stochastic data set and if you choose your starting and ending points carefully enough you can make it go in any direction you want. This graph is regularly relied upon by uh, Mr. Pachori of the IPCC. I challenged him on it recently in Copenhagen. It's also relied upon by the EPA. It is defective as I shall now show. Next one please. This graph is the same data but this time with different trend lines on it. From 1905 to 1945, you will see that the temperature rose faster than from 1905 to 2005. Does this mean that the rate of global warming is slowing down? No, it doesn't. Both this graph and the previous one are bogus, but they're using the same technique on the same data to produce opposite conclusions. That is why the IPCC should not have used that first graph, which has been so heavily relied upon. Let us now see what the true position is. Next slide, please. You will see, in fact, there have been three periods of quite rapid warming over the last 150 years, 1860 to 1880, 1910 to 1940, and 1976 to 2001. Those three rates of warming are exactly parallel, though recently when Senator Vitter questioned uh, Mr. John Holdren about this, he tried to claim that the third rate of increase was greater than the other two. It isn't. They're exactly parallel at roughly 1.6 Celsius per century. Now, we can't explain what caused the first two rapid rates of warming because we don't have the instrumentation to find out. However, in the satellite era, to the right of the green vertical line there, we are able to observe what caused most of the third uh, piece of rapid warming. Next slide, please. And this is from a paper by Dr. Claire Pinker and her colleagues in 2005, showing a very rapid increase in what's called global brightening, the amount of sunlight actually reaching the surface of the Earth. Enough global brightening, in fact, cause a warming of 1 Celsius degree, though only 0.37 Celsius degrees was observed over that 18-year period. So if anyone tries to tell you that we cannot explain the global warming of the last 30 years except by reference to carbon dioxide, this graph and many others like it in the scientific literature should suggest otherwise. Next slide, please. And if we now include that data from Dr. Pinker together with the various forcings and temperature increases from the individual greenhouse gases, we will see that what we end up with is a fourfold overstatement of uh, the rate of increase in global temperature that was actually observed if we use the IPCC's methods to calculate what the warming would have been. A fourfold exaggeration. Next slide, please. And this result is confirmed most recently by Professor Richard Lindzen and his colleague Yang Sang Choi in a paper published in, two, in, uh, 19, in 2009 and published again this year 
showing 11 models, all predicting various rates of warming from 1.4 to infinity uh, Kelvin, if you double CO2 concentration. Next slide, please. The reality, however, is just 0.7, which is less than a quarter of what the UN would predict for a doubling of CO2 concentration. The conclusion from this is that we can explain the warming by other methods. Not very much warming is going to happen, and therefore one should be very careful before spending money, next slide please, on cap and trade. Because even if we were to shut down the entire global economy for 23 years, all you would forestall is one Fahrenheit degree of global warming, even if the UN is right in estimating the amount of warming from CO2. Therefore, the correct policy is to have the courage to do nothing. You will lose nothing thereby. There are many other problems to address. I would recommend you address those and not this. Thank you, Lord.